So what would life look like on a habitable Haitian planet? Now, if you clicked onto this video already knowing what a Haitian planet is, you may also know that the jury's still out on whether or not planets like this could support life at all. The more we learn, the better we're able to model the conditions that might exist on these types of planets, and already that information is compromising some of the initial assumptions we had. But in my opinion, science fiction shouldn't be held back by the possibility that the information it's based on might be debunked later, but rather to let our imaginations explore what could be based on what we have now. So with that out of the way, a Haitian planet is a theoretical type of planet that's larger and more massive than Earth, with a thick hydrogen atmosphere and a deep oceanic surface. What's special about this type of planet, and a big part of what makes them exciting to astronomers, is that they could potentially exist much further away from the stars they orbit than the small region of space that would typically be considered habitable. When astronomers are looking for planets that might support life, they're looking for, among other things, liquid water, which is where we believe life started on Earth. Any water on a planet positioned too close to its star would evaporate off, and any water on a planet positioned too far away would freeze. But between these two points exists a region of space that's calculated to be just right. Within this region, the right type of planet could sustain oceans, and therefore possibly life. But these calculations are built around the idea of planets with a lot of Earth-like qualities, such as similar size and atmospheric composition. Earth's atmosphere is primarily composed of nitrogen and oxygen. These elements block and absorb specific wavelengths of sunlight, which is what determines how much of the sun's heat makes it to the surface. That's why the hydrogen atmosphere of a Hyacian planet is important. Hydrogen interacts with light differently, and because of these differences, the typical habitable zone calculated for a more Earth-like atmosphere would actually be too close for a hydrogen-based atmosphere, which is why they'd probably have to be positioned further away from their star. So when you're building your fictional planet, you're going to want to give it a nice wide orbit. You can also get away with making it quite a bit larger than Earth, and you probably should because larger planets have an easier time holding on to liquid water. From there, there's a ton of variability. You can have hot Hyacian planets with oceans that sit just below their boiling point. You could have cold ones that nearly freeze. Your Hyacian planet could be tidally locked. It could have a rocky surface covered only by a shallow ocean, possibly shallow enough for tectonic movements to create mountains, or the ocean could be incredibly deep atop a small, dense core. That core could even be made of ice. For the sake of this video, I'm going to be sticking to what I think is the most classic vision for this type of planet, a large temperate planet with a deep ocean and a rocky core. And just for fun, I'm going to imagine ice at the poles. I'm also going to imagine that the exact depth of the ocean varies quite a bit because that gives us a lot of interesting options for biodiversity, which I'm generally a big fan of in world building, even though it's more difficult to write. Now, a hydrogen atmosphere would still allow for something akin to photosynthesis to occur, which means that in places where the land is close enough to the surface, it might be able to support plants like seagrass, kelp, and algae. This is important because plants are the basis for most food chains, even marine ones, so areas like this could potentially be teeming with life. But you could also populate the ocean surface with free-floating plants that move with the currents, gathering what they need from water and air without ever rooting themselves into rock or dirt. And if you wanted the plants to extend deeper than they do on Earth, for the sake of creepy deep-sea kelp forests and things like that, you could make up a life cycle that involves something like extending tendrils downward relentlessly until they hit land wherever that may be and latch on, possibly depositing seeds that float upward until they can be fed by the light of the sun. These deep sea forests could be home to vastly different types of creatures at different pressures, just like what we see in our own world's oceans. If sentient life developed on this planet, the exact form that life took would be deeply influenced by what depth it developed in. When designing complex life on a planet like this, you should stay away from giving anything mammalian characteristics. On Earth, we see plenty of mammals in the ocean, such as whales, sea lions, and dolphins, but these animals are believed to have come from terrestrial ancestors, which likely wouldn't exist on a world with no solid land above the ocean. Even if your planet does possess the aforementioned icy poles, this ice would create a surface that is completely devoid of vegetation, and thus probably wouldn't incentivize any life forms to inhabit it. However, if you did want terrestrial and aquatic life to share a planet like this, you could imagine plant life or fungus or something similar that could thrive on an icy surface. You could also develop creatures that for whatever reason need to spend some time out of water as part of their reproductive cycles. Ultimately though, even if you're not interested in using ice caps to create options for terrestrial life, they still make a great place for your fictional civilization to build surface structures which would be useful if they ever wanted to study their solar system and have the option to venture out into it one day. As intelligent life developed on Earth, there were several key discoveries and inventions that radically changed the lifestyles of the civilizations that were forming. Some really well-known examples of this are learning to use fire, the development of farming, and learning how to work with metals like bronze and steel. It'll be important for you to think about how developing underwater would affect those milestones. A civilization that developed in relatively shallow waters might learn to cultivate plant life and domesticate or herd the lower life forms they shared space with. This might lead them to develop settlements and cities similar to river valley civilizations. 
oceans. Think about how underwater geography would affect things like territory and warfare. Meanwhile, cultural milestones that involve fire and heat might require a bit more creativity. Think about how different your culture's development would be if they never encountered combustion. Would they ever learn to work with metals? What would inspire them to come up with ways to create artificial light and heat? Alternatively, this obstacle could keep a planet like this stuck in something akin to a stone age for millennia. Perhaps a neighboring spacefaring alien civilization would discover this planet and be amazed to find what a people with only simple stone tools could construct with century upon century of time to do it. Keep in mind, if you allow sentient life to develop at multiple depths within your ocean, those people would likely look as wildly different from one another as the creatures in our own oceans. A deep sea civilization would be adapted for intense pressure and constant darkness. Like most deep sea fish on Earth, they likely would be either blind or have some sort of highly specialized vision and possibly rely on other senses to navigate. There's a good chance they'd also have some bioluminescent features and get their nutrition through hunting, hydrothermal vents, and scavenging bits of organic matter that sink down from the surface. The darkness and lack of resources could lead a civilization at this depth to develop much more slowly than those that develop in shallower waters, and the two groups might share the planet without being aware of one another for quite some time. They likely wouldn't be able to survive in each other's environments, but that doesn't totally eliminate opportunities for conflict or communication between them. Byproducts of farming, mining, or industrialization that float down to the abyssal depths could greatly impact a deep sea civilization in positive or negative ways. These impacts could incentivize such a civilization to investigate what's happening in shallower waters and possibly intervene. Because of how different they'd be, the two groups would quite possibly find war rather palatable since they wouldn't necessarily recognize each other as ultimately one race like humans might. That being said, there are some deep sea fish such as certain types of angler fish that are born in shallow waters and then migrate deeper as they mature. If your fictional people had this sort of life cycle, their opportunities to come into contact with and possibly even coexist with a shallower water civilization would increase greatly. While you're obviously not confined to the biology and mechanics of Earth's oceans, they can be a great source of inspiration when it comes to considering what life might look like on a Haitian planet or any other ocean planet for that matter. I'm going to wrap this video up there, but I feel like I've only just scratched the surface of what life on a Haitian planet could look like, so drop a comment if there's anything I glossed over that you wish I'd covered. Otherwise, in my next video, I'll talk about whatever inspires me, and if that sounds exciting to you, subscribe to get notified. Shout out to my first 55 subscribers, y'all are legends. I appreciate each and every one of you, and some of y'all have been asking some really great questions in the past videos, so keep them coming. I love to see it, and I'll catch you in the next one.